Carolyn's RV Life. I'm Carolyn Rose here with Capone again today and we're here to talk to you about safety while living in your RV or van. This is really especially for women however I will say that men have to be cautious when they're out on the road as well and we all have to take precautions we all have to be aware of our surroundings and we all have to just make sure that we have what we need to feel safe or in case of an emergency so I'm gonna to talk to you today about some of the things that I do to feel safe I'm gonna share a story with you about when I was first out and I had a little bit of a scary situation and what I learned from that and uh, I'm also gonna share with you my philosophy on fear and danger I've been living in my RV alone for seven months now and before that I've traveled seven or eight countries by myself I've backpacked a lot by myself I do a lot of things alone if you listen to the media watch the news they would make you believe that you should never leave your house because the world is just crawling with people who want to do harm to you I um, mean in my experience it's almost exactly the opposite especially as a woman traveling alone I find that people are very helpful very kind very supportive and encouraging so I don't buy into the everybody's a murderer or rapist you have to take every single precaution under the Sun because the world is just full of full of bad people I don't believe in that but I'm not an idiot either <laughs> you know there is a one in a million one in five million chance whatever it is that I'm gonna run across the psycho who wants to chop me up in little pieces and put me in a freezer you know I mean you just never know so I'm not gonna be stupid about it either so I do take necessary precautions to make sure I'm safe I'm in a city or whether I'm boondocking in a remote area like I am here in the Eastern Sierras um, I'm gonna make sure I know where my tools are just in case I need them and it's you know that's not I don't live my life in fear but I do take precautions because that's just what we need to do especially as women so uh, first I'm going to share my story with you. I had been living in my RV maybe six weeks I think and I was in a suburb of Sacramento called Rancho Murrieta, tiny little farm town and really literally like the town is like a block or two. I found a nice country road away from town. There were a couple big farms around so it wasn't completely secluded and this dirt road seemed to go out into a regional open space protected area. There were a couple trailheads. It was wide enough for me to pull over on the side without being in anyone's way. I hung out there all afternoon. It seemed quiet. Nobody seemed to mind that I was there. Uh, I walked Capone. I couldn't go further in the road because it was a huge dip that my back end would have just dragged in. So I couldn't go any further in the road. So I was pretty close to the main turnoff of a country road that didn't get a ton of traffic. So I thought I would be safe there. Nobody seemed to mind that I was there. There were a few cars going in and out, mostly sightseeing, turned around right away, came back. I spent the day there. At 10.30, I was sleeping. And all of a sudden, I started hearing tons of traffic. Trucks, just lots of trucks going by. And as I laid there over the half hour, the traffic became more and more. Uh, almost a steady stream of big loud trucks going by me into this place that there was nothing out there so uh, you know I started to get a little concerned what the heck is going on out there and where are all these people going I peeked out my window and I saw big burly four-wheel drive Ford pickup trucks you know with high suspension and a couple of them the most biggest humongous American flags you've ever seen so I lay there for a while and listened to the traffic get more and more. At first they just drove by me. It seemed that they got a little more aggressive. Stopping, peeling by me, going really fast. Uh, at one point I heard a truck pull up almost right next to me and turn around and go back toward the main road. I peeked out my back window, I was sleeping, and I saw a pickup truck just sitting at the end of the road pointing out and he just sat there. And then another truck came in, stopped, a big, big, huge, one of those burly trucks with high suspension, big, huge tires, big, huge American flag, and at least, probably, at least two gun racks, I'm sure of it. Uh, and he stopped and he talked to the guy in the pickup truck. And he just sat there for a minute, came down to the rear end of my rig, did a huge spin, almost like a donut, went back to the beginning of the road, came to a complete stop, and 
peeled by me as close as he could get to my rig. I was like, yeah, I got to go. That scared me. I was like, whatever is going on out there, they don't want me here. And it became pretty obvious. So I laid in bed prior to that, probably longer than I should have. It did seem to get more aggressive. They did seem to be maybe kind of sending me a message that I shouldn't be there. And this last guy that with the big lights on his truck and everything else was the final straw. I uh, grabbed my keys, got in my seat, and um, got out of there. When I did turn around, and start to head out. The man, I'm assuming it was a man that was sitting in the pickup truck at the end, followed me out of town. Uh, it was a couple miles to the first stop sign. I came to a stop. He pulled up right next to me, looked right over at me. I pulled toward town. He went in the opposite direction. The biggest mistake that I made in that situation is I had my nose faced in the direction of going into the road where there was a dip that I couldn't go any further. So. I had to do five or six point turn amid all these people. So the lesson that I learned there is always point your rig in your escape route. Uh, sure, somebody could have blocked me in any way, but it would have been a lot easier in a 29 foot RV to crash people out of the way if I needed to rather than having to turn around. So number one, always point your rig in your escape direction so you don't have to do a tight turn in case of an emergency. The second, but I think the biggest lesson that I learned that night, especially for women, trust your gut. We minimize, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's something that we're taught. Don't make a big deal. Don't get emotional. Oh, you're just making such a fuss. So many of us grow up not trusting our gut. Uh, I can get into a lot of reasons for that, but I don't want to alienate the men who might be watching. We learn to not trust our guts. And I have learned over some of the work that I've done on myself the last few years that, you know what, my gut is right pretty much 100% of the time. So if your gut tells you something doesn't feel right, get the hell out. Don't question, don't minimize, don't justify, just get the hell out. Your gut knows more than you think it knows. Uh, our intuition is there for a reason. It's been molded over uh, centuries, millennia of having to survive um, through all of the changes in the planet that we have survived. So our gut instinct is there for a reason and trust it. So that was the, the second thing I learned that night. I probably should have left sooner, and but I didn't. No harm done. I wasn't hurt, thank God. Uh, but it, it did teach me some valuable lessons that I can't take anything for granted. When I'm backpacking, nobody's going to backpack 50 miles into the wilderness to chop me up in little pieces. You know, it just, I don't think killers are that enthusiastic. They're probably pretty lazy. Uh, you know, but, but we're out here where other people on wheels can go. And that's my biggest fear. A lot of times I'm out here with nothing but hunters with cases of Budweiser. So they're all armed and drunk and not a good situation. So I do need to make sure I protect myself. So with that said, there are a few things that I do around camp in my rig, outside of my rig to make sure I have a level of protection. The first thing I do at camp is, you'll see I have two chairs here. I never just put out one chair. I carry two chairs, I put out two chairs, so that even if people do see me walking around with Capone, they could think that my significant other is, is still in the rig. So it gives the impression that there is more than one person here that I'm not alone. So always put out two chairs. The other thing that I read early on when I was researching how to be safe is to put a big pair of men's boots, men's shoes outside your door and leave them there overnight so that if anybody does come by, they see a big giant pair of men's boots and don't get little ones, get big ones. <laughs> so it looks like a big burly man is in there. Um, put those outside your door. I happen to have giant, what my ex-husband used to call Fred Flintstone feet. So I just use my hiking boots. These are a size 10 men's. So I think they pretty much do the job. I also put my other walking shoes outside because these look like something more like what I would wear um, so that they do think, yeah, there's a man in there with her. So two pairs of shoes. Again, we want to create the impression that we're not out here alone. And I think whether you're a man or a woman, I just think that that's common sense. 
And that's a good practice to get into because even men can be vulnerable to groups of men with guns and Budweiser, right? <laughs> so you want to give the impression that you're not alone. Another thing that I carry is bear spray. The benefit of bear spray over pepper spray, it's a little bit more. I paid $40 for this at a specialty hunting outdoor store. So you might be able to get it cheaper online or somewhere. But the benefit of bear spray is that it's got a long trajectory. I had pepper spray, the little one on the keychain, and I think the trajectory is a couple inches. So you really have to be in the face of your assaulter uh, in order for that to work. Bear spray has a trajectory trajectory that word of a few feet so have a can of bear spray it's also good for bears <laughs> um, and read the directions and make sure you know how to use it there is a safety latch I'm not gonna pull it now there is a safety latch that needs to be pulled off before you can use it the last thing you want in an emergency is to have to fumble around and figure out how to use it so get bear spray keep it close by uh, if you're not comfortable walking by yourself it attaches to your belt you can carry it with you if you're in bear country um, certain national parks don't allow it so be careful but just as far as being out in national forests and things like that if you feel more comfortable carrying it I keep this by my bed the other thing I think everybody has a handy dandy baseball bat right so I keep this also by my bed it's very heavy metal make sure it's easy to grab uh, it's always by my head if I am in a place maybe I'm stealth camping maybe I'm in a place with a lot of traffic and I'm just kind of feeling maybe a little like I might need to take extra precautions I will actually make sure it's right next to me in case I need to grab it so baseball bat is also a good thing to have around couple other things. Um, I'm a backpacker, so I have an ice axe. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm not going to tell you everywhere I put my, my tools um, in my RV for safety reasons, but I do have strategically placed uh, items around my RV because you never know. Somebody might try to come in my back window. Somebody might try to come in my side door. Somebody might try to come in the front. You never know. So I do make sure I have, especially at night when I'm going to sleep, I have strategically placed items. Regardless of where I end up, I'm going to have something that I can use to protect myself. So while I might have a couple things by my bed, I might have a couple things by my door, in my kitchen, in my refrigerator, in my cupboards, you never know. So watch out. <laughs> so keep a couple different things around that you might be able to use to protect yourself. I happen to have an ice axe. I, you know, yeah, I wouldn't mess with somebody with an ice axe. Another tip is I sleep with my cell phone. So make sure you have your cell phone close by just in case you need to call 911. And every time you go wherever you camp, make sure you know where you are. Whether you're in a campground, know the name of the campground. Whether you're on a street somewhere, an intersection, know what street you're on, know the cross street. If you are remote like I am, get your GPS coordinates. So that in an emergency, if you need to call emergency services, you can tell them where you are. You can't rely on the GPS on your cell phone. So what I like to do is when I get to a new location, I'll drop drop a pin in Google Maps, I'll get my GPS coordinates, I'll save them to my phone so that then I can easily text or email them or even read them if I needed to. Keep your cell phone close by when you're sleeping in case you need to call for help and know where you are so that you can tell emergency responders where you are. Another thing is are my keys. I have two sets of keys. I keep one by my head. I live in a 29 foot RV again you never know where danger what direction it might come from so I, I keep a, a set of keys by my head by my bed I just want to know that somebody is in my rig in the front I'm gonna sneak out the back and who knows you know maybe I've watched too many horror flicks I'm running around the wilderness and they're chasing me and I'm able to jump back in the rig and go I don't know but I just feel safe having a set of keys by my head I keep another set of keys strategically placed somewhere within the rig I'm not gonna tell you where um, um, again for safety reasons but I do keep another set of keys somewhere in the rig where I know I'm gonna be able to grab them in a hurry if for whatever reason I can't get to the ones by my bed um, so know where they are 
at all times. Make it a habit of putting your keys in that strategic spot every night before you go to bed so that in an emergency you don't have to think about it, you just know where they are. You can grab them and go away. All right, so keep your keys and your cell phone nearby. Another tip or trick or uh, suggestion, recognize these simple tools, right, that you would have in your RV. I've got my hammer here, which goes in my toolkit, and Molly here, Molly Hatchet, get it? She used to have Molly painted on her. <laughs> For all you old school people out there who remember Molly Hatchet, this is Molly. Uh, these are just typical tools you might have around your RV and you might be using. Do not leave them outside, okay? If your toolkit is, is outside, put it inside, lock it up. You don't wanna leave tools laying around that people might be able to use to break in or to hurt you. Somebody might just be walking by and it might be, you don't wanna give them a crime of opportunity, right? Ooh, look, a hatchet and a hammer. <laughs> so just make sure your heavy tools, anything that might be used to break in, of course they could always use a rock, you know, but this is just something I like to do, it just makes me feel a little safer. I'm not gonna leave a hammer or a hatchet sitting right outside my door where anybody could pick it up break into my RV and get to work chopping me up in little pieces. So hide your tools. Another thing that I have, I just had this from my house and I thought it would be a good idea to bring with me. It's a welcome picture with a Rottweiler on it. And this is going to make people think that I have a Rottweiler in my rig. I have a Rottweiler mix. So um, something like this could be a good deterrent for you. You might want to get a picture of a Rottweiler, something with a big scary dog on it. Also, in the truck stops that I've been in, you see those koozies and there's posters about don't mess, don't mess with Smith & Wesson. This place is guarded by my friends Smith & Wesson. You want to mess with me and my 45? You know those burly truck stop signs that you see. You might want to consider getting one of those and putting it in your window um, or an NRA sticker. It might be a deterrent. If somebody sees an NRA sticker or sees that your rig is, is guarded by Smith & Wesson, they might think twice about breaking in. On the other hand, it could also mean, well, I'm not gonna break in unless I come armed. So that can go both ways, and that's why I haven't done it. Not to mention, I have California plates, I'm a California resident, an NRA sticker could bring me a whole different set of troubles. <laughs> so I have opted not to do that, but it, some people do, and it just makes them feel safer. So while we're on the subject of guns, that's the question I get asked the most. Are you armed? Are you exercising your Second Amendment rights? I have nothing against guns. Uh, and it's a very personal decision for everyone out here about whether or not you wanna be armed. Ironically, I think, I, I run into more men who are armed than women, which is really interesting. Um, uh, it's a personal decision. I'm not going to say you should get a gun or you shouldn't get a gun. Uh, it is something that I think you have to decide for yourself. I think that street smart, gut instinct, being aware of your surroundings go a long way toward protecting yourself. I think that again it's a personal decision but if you're not comfortable with it you don't have to have one. Uh, I think there's a lot of pressure for us. I hear it all the time. I get emails from people all the time. I hope you're exercising your Second Amendment rights. It's a dangerous world out there. And like I said, I don't subscribe to that dangerous world thing. Who knows? You know, I'm probably, who knows how things might end for me. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And I could end up eating these words. But in my 49 years, um, honestly, I'll be completely frank with you. The people I know have hurt me a lot more than strangers. So just be smart, use your instincts, trust your gut. It's really critical at all times to be aware of your surroundings. I've been here for eight or nine days now. I walk a lot, I walk the perimeter. I knew a couple days ago, there were a couple people out there a mile and a half out in tents. So just knowing kind of who's out here, who's around, what kind of traffic is out here, and gauging what kind of people come to this area. If it's a bunch of troublemakers, I would have left. Uh, but it hasn't been. I've seen some van dwellers out here mostly, uh, driving up and down the road. So people like me, who are probably coming out here to find a place to stay for a couple of weeks. But if I were in a rowdy area with a lot of uh, four-wheeling and, and drinking and guns and things like that, uh, then again, I might wanna decide to move.
And of course, I have Capone here. <laughs> you probably can't see him, but and that's another really great deterrent. Get a dog. He, he can sound pretty scary. He's 55 pounds and he's very protective. If anybody comes near the rig, he lets me know and he lets them know that they better back off. It took him a while. So if you have a dog and you move into a rig, just know that it could take a while for them to realize this is home now. Um, he wasn't very protective in the beginning. It took him, uh, I think two months, maybe three, for him to realize that was home and it was his job to protect it. So a dog is another good deterrent. So that's my spiel on safety on the road. Whether you're a woman traveling alone in an RV or whether you're a man, we all need to take precautions when we're out here, just like we do in everyday life. Maybe a little more so out here because we are so secluded and so remote. All right, um, if you have any questions or you want any more information about how I stay safe or any other of my experiences traveling the world or RV traveling or backpacking and, and how I've taken care of myself doing all that alone, please leave me your comments. I do love hearing from you. And as always, you can visit my website at www.carolynsrvlife.com to learn more and to follow my blogs. And that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.